a federal government solicitation. Hello, everyone, and we're going to get right into this. I'm going to provide a variety of opportunities because one of the biggest questions that comes up over and over and over again is how do you read, understand, what do these documents mean? And this is really important because they seem confusing and depending, some may use this as an excuse to try to pivot into another space, whether it's selling products, it's going on dibs, it's getting routes off of USPS, whatever it is. And I just want to make it clear, regardless of the opportunity that you bid and win, you still have to execute it. So don't forget that. And hello to everyone who's here. I'm so excited that you all are here today. And for those of you just joining, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks, been awarded over $50 million government contracts. So I'm starting off with federal agencies today. So this is U.S. Department of Interior Janitorial Services. I am focusing on total small business because majority of you, that's right, it's money making time. Um, because the majority of you are total small businesses. And I'll also take a look at the questions. Somebody has a quick question about DLA. Uh, well, I mean, when it comes to the DLA, it's really important to have a physical business address that's not your house because they mail you things. But most importantly, if you're going through all of these steps to be to be able to sell on dibs, do you have the cash flow to buy the products? Are you sure you want to sell on dibs? Are you sure you want to sell on dibs? Just putting that out there. So you'll see here, it's really important. We have the notice number, also sometimes called the opportunity number. And then you see the layers. So we have the Department of Interior. This is Fish and Wildlife, the FWS over SAT department. This is just to try to get you to use the different free resources, which you're more than welcome. If you choose, you can click and learn more. Solicitation. This means that this agency, in theory, has the money to pay for the thing, which is housekeeping janitorial, okay? Yes, and thank you, Melody. Don't forget to like, share, uh, hit the notification button, subscribe. And for you, Erin, you don't have to do anything with DLA. Uh, well, oh, you said getting your cage code. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Um, you're just, you can call them because they're probably trying to verify your address. And if your address is connected to where you live, you have to constantly change that address with the state in which you're registered. So just call the phone number and the email. Okay. And for those of you who are trying to get on dibs, the information I shared still applies. So it's a solicitation, meaning they have the monies to buy the thing. It was released on February 28th. It's due on the 20th, which I like. I like when there's 10 days in between because I don't like wasting my time. I'm not going to waste my time and bid on something if it's rigged. And Shanae, what's up? Melody, Aaron, all of you, I'm so excited. Control, everyone, I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Shanae. You're the best. You guys got to follow Shanae. She has about a million subscribers or followers on LinkedIn. She is the queen of LinkedIn. You must follow her. Her name is there. Please follow her on LinkedIn. So, and you may wonder why would I even do that? Well, this is an opportunity for janitorial services. You don't have to live in Alaska to do this work. This is where I'm assuming the work is. But if you need to find a janitorial company, because this is kind of subcontracting middleman, you can go on a LinkedIn you can go on a Facebook marketplace, you can go on Google, but there's a lot, there are tons of companies on LinkedIn. So it's a great tool to use. And thank you so much, Aaron. I'm glad that you're reading the book and learning a lot. That is amazing. Here, I'll put that up here. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Make sure you follow Shanae Moray on LinkedIn. She's also on YouTube. So like, subscribe to her channel too. So you can see the cage code. This is important in case you're like, well, I want to find more of these. Well, what's the cage code? Better yet, you can use the PSC code, the product service code. You can type that in into the search and every single thing related to housekeeping will come up. Next is, are the attachments. I prefer opportunities where there aren't that many attachments. Um, Jerry, this is a good question and you can, um, I'll have Melody, will get in contact with you about that. So the thing about the attachments is it can seem very overwhelming. I mean, think about our day. We spend hours on social media. We spend time at work. We spend time with our families. How many of us are opening attachments all the time? I don't know. I don't think there's a plethora of people who are opening attachments all the time. So it can seem psychologically like, oh my God, it's overwhelming. They're not, they're just, it's just information. So what's key is you must have a, the systems to read these. Having, excuse me, PDF reader, Microsoft Office, or something of that sort. Excuse me, it's really important that you have these where you're not going to be able to open the attachments. So we're going to the attachments in a second. I noticed that this is the contracting office. This is the person, um, point of contact, Sarah. We have her phone number. We have everything here and the history. So great. There's no secondary point of contact. So I like to open the most recent document, which I will share here in just a second. Okay, terrific. And I will zoom in. So you can see, you want to verify, it's a small business set aside check. It's due March 20th check. And they also give you the time. So that means you must submit your proposal to them by 1700 on the 20th. And you're going to submit it via email. And typically you submit a PDF and maybe an Excel sheet. This is a five year contract. The period of performance is the time in which you will provide the thing. It's called period of performance. So it's March, it's uh, April 1st. So this is a quick turnaround. Like they're gonna award this really fast because the deadline's the 20th and they want you to start on April 1st. Let's see if my screen, it did. Just a second. So since they have that quick turnaround, that means you must be prepared to staff the opportunity because they're telling you, listen, this is when we're starting. You know, they're, they don't want excuses. And I'm not saying any of you would give them excuses. They want you to perform. This page right here is really important because typically, which we're not going to go into depth about because this is about understanding what all of this means. This is really important because anytime you see one of these, you can see the name of the document on the bottom in SF standard form 1449, you will need to complete section 17 alpha, the code, which is like your cage code or UEI. You're going to put your business name, address, you can put the point of contact's name, your phone number, and you're going to complete 30 Alpha, which is your signature, 30 Bravo, name and title, 30 Charlie, date signed. That's it. You, you're, you, you don't need to complete anything else on here. You don't have to put the pricing here. If they ask you to, you can if you really want to, but we're not really sure what exactly they require, but typically when you have a standard form 1449, you're going to have to at least fill out what I just shared. Okay. So each of these line items represent 
what you're going to charge them. Because remember, this is a five-year contract. So let's say I'm just throwing out numbers. Let's say the first year it's 100,000. The six, second year, it's or first option year, which is the second year, it's 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. And then you um, tally it up and give them your sum. But, it, but also there's instructions to offer. So I'm not here to be confusing. I just want you to know that each and every piece of these different attachments have different importance to them. So don't just think like, oh, you know, I heard this person online. They said, all I need to do is just fill this out. Do, 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 do. Like, yeah, no, that's not the case. So here's something that's really interesting. Right here, it says this requirement is being solicited as full and open, meaning anybody could bid on it, like Mary Maids, Amazon, which contradicts this, right? It said small business set aside. So one thing that's really important is you want to contact the point of contact. Because remember, the work is in Alaska and Homer. The point of contact is in Virginia. So you're going to want to email Sarah because she's listed on the website, just to go back. You're going to want to email her and clarify. And it doesn't mean that you can't bid if it's full and open. It's just what's important is you have all of your questions clarified because that may change your strategy. It may change your pricing. It may change what's called a go, no go decision. Because the whole point of doing this, it's not just for some fun exercise or, oh, I heard it's a numbers game. It's for you to figure out which ones you can bid on, what it will take to win, what you need to do to win, and for your overall close rate. Because it would be cool if you have a 20% close rate if you're, especially if you're doing subcontracting or the middleman. Also, don't forget to hit the, the like, the um, notification, share. So going back to the attachment, which is a just a PDF document. That's all that this is. So we already have a question to email Miss Sarah. And then it's also interesting because this said one April through March. Just want to make sure those dates were the same. Okay, good. One April. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, great. Also, they're letting you know that apparently there's some government representative named Laura or Laura. So if I were you, I would email both Sarah and Laura because they, they got a lot going on, just like how we do. You know, their priority is not awarding janitorial contracts. They have their own priority. So this is kind of an additional duty often. And then they're also letting you know that you shall be registered in SAM prior to award. So if you do not have a cage code, this puts you in a situation I know that there are those I've um, interviewed at least one who was like, oh, I didn't really have my code. I got that. But you really want to have your code, but just keep it in mind. Also, it's due the 20th at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and you have to email. And it says you got to email it to Timothy, which is interesting because they also mentioned Sarah. So that may be another question that you ask. Hey, I just want to verify I'm sending it to Timothy. I'm not sending it to Sarah. Or what you might want to do is send it to Timothy and to Sarah. I know you may be watching this thinking like, oh my gosh, this is already so confusing. But guess what? This right here is a nice five-year contract where you have people cleaning a building, you receive monthly revenue, and you're not going to be the one cleaning the building. If making money was so easy, we all would be doing it. There's some effort, there's some energy that you have to exude. And here's the deal, most people won't. 
Most people will say, no, this is too confusing. This is too hard. I'm not going to do this. And they're just going to give up. So then it lowers the competition because you're a GovCon winner. You're not here to give up. Also, I want you to take notice that they've already given you explicit instructions that in the subject line, when you email Timothy, you have to put the solicitation number and you need to submit either a Word document or a PDF. So I like submitting PDFs because with a Word document, somebody may open it up. You may have had this before. You open up an attachment. And you're like, what's going on? Everything moved. Why does this look like that? With a PDF, you don't have that. The, the information didn't move. This is a PDF. And the solicitation number is here, and it's also on SAM. And then it says all questions are supposed to be emailed to Timothy. So I would still copy Sarah just because she's listed, but I, just make sure that you send the questions by March 13th. I would copy Sarah and put the signature, I mean, put the solicitation number in the subject line. Uh, for those watching, this is a solicitation. While the subcontractor is doing the work, is there a way? Oh, I think my, just one second. Great. While the subcontractor is doing the work, is there a way to get a portion of the contract awarded to satisfy the sub to fulfill the contract? As soon as, oh, thank you so much, Aaron. That's so sweet of you uh, for the, um, for the payment there. That's so sweet of you. Appreciate it. So Daniel, like you work as soon as you get the contract. Like it, it's up to you to figure out how you're going to pay these people when you're going to pay them. It's you as the business owner. So they're not going to give you any money if that's what you're asking. That's not going to happen. Okay. Cool. Keep the questions coming. I'm going to go back to the attachment. Also keep in mind, you know, I've been doing this for since 2008, in essence, 2007, 2008. So it doesn't take me a long time to go through this. And I don't want you to get discouraged. It's just because I've been doing it for a while. I've worked on contracts with small businesses, with IBM types, with 22nd century types, with you know, other companies that shall remain nameless. Uh, I've worked with all different kinds of companies on reading these and putting these together. So you have to give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. And we know the curls are popping today. So this is the solicitation where they're starting to explain what they are looking for. What I like to do when it comes to these, because I, I just think it's overlooked, is I like to see what are the evaluation factors, meaning how are they going to decide who's going to do the work? I did a control F, nothing really came up just yet, which is okay. Ah, but guess what? Look, you guys see it? It's right there. It was there this whole time. So they're basing it on lowest price, technically acceptable. And then Casa25 asked, oh, sorry, you all, I didn't realize I kept the question up. Uh, do you recommend calling subcontractors before or after? Do you mention it's a government? You know, this is really up to you. I mean, I'm the kind of person where I like to be as transparent as possible, but I also understand it's business. So here's what I recommend. And that is when you are contacting a company, before you contact them, log into SAM and look up the business name to see if they're in SAM. Maybe you ask them. Look up up in SAM so then you know, do they have a cage code or not? If they do, y'all roll, roll the dice. 
I got this beautiful kit from Marriott. This is not a Marriott sponsored video, but because of my status with them, and they now are partnered with the MGM, I got this beautiful kit, and this is a big old die. So we're 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 rolling the dice. Roll the two. You see it? There's like pink numbers. Roll the two. So you roll the dice and you may call and ask them, even if they're listed in there. Hey, Sam's cleaning. You know, I, I have a business opportunity for you. My name is Kizzy. I'm calling because I would love to, I heard you're the go-to for cleaning. I would love to get a price quote for you on XYZ. Can I send that and email that over to you? And I just want to let you know it is a government contract. I mean, maybe you're already going after it. And they may say, yeah, well, we were, but we don't really want to bid on it. If you can tell by the tone of their voice that they're going to anyways, you know, because at the end of the day, you're going to work with somebody for five years. So if you're starting out where somebody is being a little dishonest, you have five years of that. You know, is this, oh, just don't forget that stuff. So um, when it comes to do you find companies before, since this has a tight turn, you definitely want somebody ready. However, comma, if you know pricing, let's say Casa 25, you are like the go-to for cleaning. You already have an idea of the market. You already know what to price it. Then you can, again, roll the dice, submit the price, because it's easier for me to say, A.D. Turner, I'm going to pay you $1,200 a month cash for you to clean a building three times a month. It's much easier to say that. Then AD gets to decide, hmm, do I want to take this? That's easier than, hey, AD, I'm bidding on this opportunity, and 20 companies have called him, and he's like, okay, whatever. Sure, 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 we're going to do this work. The skepticism sets in. So, um, but typically people have a, a vendor beforehand, but sometimes you may not. We've done that especially on training, because we know training well. Sometimes we didn't need training, even with staffing positions. If they didn't ask for a resume, then you're not getting a resume. Yeah, I moved the dice, Jerry. Here, let me put, I had, it's a huge die. This was the dice. It's like massive. It's like a paperweight, but it still rolls. But thank you for asking. So <laughs> this kid is crazy. Let's take a look at this again. Make sure I have this on the screen. Okay, so now we know it's lowest price technically acceptable. One thing I strongly suggest, because remember they said if you have any questions to contact our buddy Timothy, I suggest asking Timothy the following questions. Is there incumbent? If so, what is the contract number? What is the name of the vendor? And what was the contract award amount? You definitely want to find that out because otherwise you're kind of shooting in the dark. You're not really sure. Does that mean you can't win? Of course not. One of my students, Anna, who I interviewed on the channel, her first prime contract was janitorial. So there's no reason you can't win. And on top of it, who's thinking of bidding on stuff with U.S. Fish and Wildlife? Nobody. Everybody's focused on Army, Navy, mar Marines. Nobody's thinking about that. So it puts you in this position of like, you're not going to have a ton of competition because they're not thinking of bidding it. Now, the location makes it a little tricky. However, comma, there's no reason you can't find somebody to do this work. So what I also am looking for, so I start off, I want to know what's the evaluation criteria when I'm reading this. Got it. Next, I want to know what are the things I have to submit and what does, what does this all entail? So they're letting you know you will be paid by the IPP system. This system you can no longer register in. They, if you ever get an email and they're like, hey, uh, Nikki, you know, register an IPP, that basically means you're going to win. Can you ask on Unison bids if there's an incumbent? Yes, you may. Jerry, I was looking yesterday, going to spend some time going to get this well. Good, good, good. You're totally going to get this well. You're going to crush it. And y'all, don't forget to hit the like, hit the notification, share. I'm so grateful you all are here. You're amazing. And so 
that's how they're going to pay. They're also telling you it's tax exempt, um, which is important because what if you need to buy cleaning products, right? So they're letting you know it's right here. The vendor shall furnish a blank tax exempt form to the contract administrator for completion upon award of the blanket purchase agreement. So this is what's called a blanket purchase agreement, which is awesome. That means it's kind of like, mm, it's like a credit card. Y'all, y'all, we all know that person. I remember there was this woman, there's my friend in, in grad school where she had like a high, um, a credit card with a high limit, but like she would never use her credit card. And so credit card companies don't want that. They want the, the people who are constantly swiping, 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 paying the fees, overdraw, overdrawing, paying late. That's how they're making their money, right? So when it comes to a blanket purchase agreement, it's similar to my friend who had the high credit limit but didn't use her card. And this is what I mean. So they may issue you a contract for hypothetically $3 million. However, they can add the, tr the cleaning services as needed. So it's like a credit card because just because you get the credit card doesn't mean you're like, woo, <laughs> I'm going to go spend $50,000, right? It's like as needed. So it's something to think about. And also what's cool about a blanket purchase agreement is they can constantly add work to it. So this could pivot into other cleaning, maybe other buildings. It's really cool. So what about on local? Can you ask about incumbent? For state and local, I don't see why not. It's up to them if they want to say yes or no. Good question, son. What are some things that can go wrong with hiring subcontractors? You don't trust yourself. You have to trust yourself and you have to communicate orally, written, text message, you must communicate what's expected and you need to have quality control. That That's when things don't go well. It's when people are like, oh yeah, I heard you use middleman. I have them do it. They're the expert. Woo. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. That's when it goes bad. But that's just like with employees, you know, especially for any of you who watch who in the, did I marry? You know, she talked about um, she was a virtual employee and she wasn't doing really well. She said something like she was watching TV, falling asleep, and it ended up being like her and one other person were like the only two during COVID working in an office. I mean, it's like that. Like somebody quality controlled and was like, homegirl's sleeping. Because if not, then she could have continued on with her ways. This is not to ding her. It's just bringing up a point, right? Where's the site we can get contracts for subcontractors to sign? gcwdocs.co. gcwdocs.co. That's a good question. So let's keep it moving. Let's keep it going on. They're also telling you about invoicing. That's perfect. Now, the next thing is I'm looking for instructions to offer. Every agency calls us something different. Remember, this is Department of Interior, Fish and Wildlife. They want you to complete the SF-1449, which to, as a friendly reminder, that's that document. The easiest way to do it is here in Adobe Pro, but you have to use you know, the resources and tools that you have. Next, they want a technical volume. Technical volume means you're probably going to have to tell them how you're going to do this. You can use chat GPT. You can ask your teaming partner. Maybe you have a friend, family member that's in cleaning. You can Google it. I am sure that there is some website that offers a janitorial proposal. I mean, I'm being really serious. You know, we're going to dig deeper into this, but whenever I'm looking and reviewing a solicitation, I'm also thinking about how am I going to win this? What do I need to do to respond? Because by going through this exercise, you're trying to figure out, do I keep this fish or do I throw it back in? Is it go or no go? That's the whole point of this. Um, so Valerie, do you have a joint venture, meaning you have 
two of you came together, you created another company, you have a separate cage code. You, you, may, you may mean you're doing something else. If the answer is yes to what I just said, then respond, please. A joint venture means two companies, you come together, you form a new company, you get a new tax ID, you get a separate cage code, and you register as a joint venture in SAM. And then lastly, they want the price volume. And more than likely, just because of the nature of this, you, you can probably just put the pricing here. But we must see. We don't know yet. Do they want supplies? Do they want you to break it down? Who knows? Also, they said you got to sign it. So that's why having Adobe Pro is nice because I can easily sign on here. So it says the price has to be reasonable. It should not exceed that which would be incurred by a prudent person in the conduct of a competitive business. This represents a compromise between the sellers and the buyers opinion of what constitutes a fair price. Reasonableness considers the context of a given source selection, including current market research, market conditions, and other factors that affect the ability of an offer to perform the contract requirements. What is reasonable depends upon a variety of considerations and circumstances, including so in other words, don't try to lowball them. Don't try to go too high. Like make sure the pricing that you provide can be backed up. That's what they're saying to you. That's what they're saying. So we got that. Moving on. It says that for the final quoted price, both total and individual, must include all fees and they are tax exempt. This is key. I mean, there have been times I forgot things in pricing. You want to make sure you include all of the fees. Are you including any gas? Are you, I don't know. What are you including in here? So, and even when you obtain pricing from vendors, you want to make sure you ask them, did you include all of your fees? Okay. So going back to Valerie. Okay. So Valerie, it, that's not a sub, that's not a joint venture. So you're just subcontracting. That's all it is. So you would just put, you know, I'm Valerie Williams, the president of blah, 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 blah. I will be partnering with Jones cleaning, blah, 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 blah. That's it. Can they try to negotiate your price? Kim, do you mean, is they meaning the government? Please feel free to clarify. Nikki, you are spot on. Yes. You can ask them to provide it. Does that mean they will? Maybe, maybe not. But also it's a telltale sign. If you're like pulling this from them, you know, maybe they're going through some stuff, but then are you going to have to pull it for them to clean? You know, sometimes these are little flags. Yes, the government, Kim said. Yes, they can. You Sometimes they will contact you and say, is this your best and final uh, are you open to offering additional discount? Yeah, they'll ask you. They have no problem trying to get a discount, especially with a flowery paragraph like that. The person who wrote that paragraph is so proud of this paragraph. They're like, ooh, my bachelor's degree in English paid off. You know, that's the other thing. And one of my gifts is I really can read in between the lines and I'm intuitive. Whether you want to believe it or not, I'm very intuitive. And so we're just, don't forget, I'm your intuitive, psychic, government contracting friend and expert. So I'm not too concerned with all of these clauses right here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I like to see what's on here because I think this is 50, 52 pages. And there's a couple other attachments. Okay. Got it. This, this right here, I'm not concerned with the clauses because it's, they put these in a lot of them, unless I see something that, ex, that distinctly says you cannot subcontract. And this is not the VA. So with the VA, there's issues or not issues, but there's rules around service disabled veteran owned small businesses. Again, I'm not concerned because this is fish and wildlife. So this right here, they're talking about how you would invoice 
So yes, they break down how you invoice them. They give you support. They, you know, so these are things just to be aware of and just know that the government is here to help you when you win. Okay, well, it looks like um, they're giving you a pricing sheet here that they, I guess it looks like they just want you to enter it here instead of on the standard form. So that's kind of cool. What is going to cost you every month and is going to cost you annually. So again, you just, uh, if you have Adobe Pro, you just type it in there. It's really simple. Okay. And then here under technically or technical accepted, acceptability to include past performance. So with the federal government, the state and local will do this too, is they, they typically will define things for you. Submit a narrative response that clearly demonstrates its understanding of an approach to accomplishing the service requirements. Okay, I, I think your teaming partner can easily do that. I think chat GPT could do that. And it looks like they also want you to include past performance. Right now, they haven't really, they, they, they've been really vague. So it could be, you know, we have past performance, here are our three clients. And then the three clients are the clients, if you yourself have experience in cleaning, you list the three clients. If you're partnering with someone, you list their three clients. Let's see what else they mentioned again about the lowest price. They're also saying here that they will look in the CPAR system. I want to quickly show you that because pretty much nobody out there except for yours truly talks about it. But I also know why most people don't talk about it because they don't really have um, <laughs> sizable contracts. And so if you don't have sizable contracts, you're not going to be in the CPAR system. Uh let me just show it to you. I'm not going to log in because I'm going to, it'll expose too much of my information, my personal information, but I will show you what the screen looks like. So what they're saying to you is, hey, we're going to also check CPAR. So CPAR is, is kind of like, and it's sophisticated Yelp. It's where when you, typically I found that his contract's a million and higher, but not always. But usually for us has been a million or higher, they will, it triggers what's called a CPAR. And so with the CPAR, the agency goes into this system. And I actually have a video on this. It's an older video, but the system, I mean, you can see it's a beautiful system and they will go in there and they evaluate you. So they evaluate you on a rating scale and they may add some information like this contract encompassed blah, 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 blah. You know, we would do work with this with this firm again uh, it, or whatever things it may or may not say. So a federal agency can go into CPARs and pull information about you. And if you don't have a CPAR, that's OK, too. It's just like Yelp. If you see a Yelp review and you're like, man, they got three stars. Maybe you go on Google and you're like, man, they got 3.5 stars. I don't want to go there. You're maybe trying to go to a restaurant with a four stars or five. It's the same with the government. If a business is like everything is unsatisfactory, they may say, oh, do we really want to hire them? And in case you're wondering, yes, you receive your evaluations. So whenever your stuff is in the CPARs, you would know you're made aware. It's not a secret. But again, these are typically contracts that are million or higher. And also I have, um, I appreciate you, Tommy. I appreciate you, Tommy Sonemeyer's mama, so, so much. And that is Super Chat. What does it mean when a solicitation has been updated with a company name? Ah, like a company has been added. Meaning that company here, they selected, um, I think it's called follow or, or interested. They clicked a button 
to basically express interest. That's it. That's all. What's cool is, I mean, for you to be aware of who they are. That's it, though. But it's cool. I love that question. I am not logged in, but I can follow. If I were to log in, I can follow. Um, and if I start following it, I'll start getting the notifications that was just that were just mentioned. So I'm going to go back to the PDF because we're talking about how to read these, how to understand these different solicitations, because it does take a little bit of time. I've been doing this for a while, so it, it does come more natural to me, but you can easily figure this out. Don't get discouraged. All it is is just words. We have, we all had no problem figuring out how to handle COVID. I mean, so we can do this. You got this. Don't be discouraged. So this is more like FARs, different clauses. And remember, I'm not too concerned with this because the instructions to offer, they want a narrative response that gives you this. They want the pricing. And they want some references. I mean, the, this in of itself, this is like a three-page proposal. I mean, truly it is. It's a cover page. It's maybe a letter. That pricing paragraph, I mean, you could literally cut and paste this and then underneath it, do your technical approach. And that could be three paragraphs. And if you want to be fancy, you could put photos in there. I mean, that people love photos, you know, think like how we are. Why, you know, we love Instagram. We love TikTok. We love images. We love Facebook. You're welcome to put photos in it. A woman who I recently interviewed, she won a catering contract and she put photos of the food in her proposal. I think that was a brilliant idea. They didn't ask for that, but it makes it more real. And you can ask your teaming partner, hey, do you have photos? Or maybe you have photos if you are the go-to. They don't have to be photos in Alaska. They don't even have to be recent photos. But, I mean, come on, at least in the like, past 10 years. Please no photos with some old, like, Betamac or something in here. Okay. So let's see. Next thing I would do with this. Oops, hold on, y'all. It stopped sharing. Just give me a second. Is I also will search like resume, insurance. These are like key terms I'll start to search. I don't think that they want anything like that, but you never know. So on here, it's Command F. I'm on a Mac. I just typed in resume, insurance. Nothing comes up. Okay, this is great. So, but if you recall, we don't really know what are we cleaning, right? So we got to look at the other attachments. We know what it takes to submit and what they're looking for in the document. We just don't really know what is the scope of work. Just give me a second. So the scope of work is right here. Attachment alpha, scope of work. And you can see that having Microsoft Word, all of those things are helpful, but you don't need to have them. Oh, it is a PDF, okay. Just a second. Okay, terrific, y'all. Okay, I'm going to enlarge it. So it says that they're looking for labor supervision. You are the one, you are the one making sure the work's being done. It's not up to Fish and Wildlife to make sure Shirley's cleaning. So it looks like it's at the visitor center. Square footage provided for flooring types are approximate. It's the responsibility of the contractor to verify actual area. Now, we haven't gotten there yet, but 
maybe there's a site visit. Maybe you can ask for a site visit. And this is a little different because it's janitorial, but let's say you're bidding on HVAC. Let's say you're bidding on flooring. The same apply. If you're bidding on staffing, you would not ask for a site visit. If you're bidding on training, you're not going to ask for a site visit, but you may ask questions such as, where is the training being held? Do I get access to Wi-Fi or not? Will I have access to computers? Can I bring my own computer? You see what I mean? So that's why it's important to early on identify who's the point of contact to ask the questions, to direct all the questions. So the scope of work. So we see mechanical rooms, maintenance are not included. You have all the square feet here. There's a first floor, a second floor. There, there's a lot going on. And then it says for regular cleaning, we're asking for quotes on overall base cleaning with option years. And this is what they're looking for. So if you were, so when you reach out to a company, what you are not going to do is email them this entire document. You need to cut, you need to pull out what it entails. Here's what they're looking for. Here are the specs. Here's how I want you to do pricing. Because remember, the pricing is in that, that table. You don't need them to break down how much an hour, how much for the, you don't need that. Just how much would it cost them? Because you're going to add your profit on top of it, keeping in mind this is lowest price technically acceptable. That doesn't mean you don't add a profit. It doesn't mean you do this and lose money. It just means be aware of it. That's it. So all you got to do is be aware of it. Okay. Sorry, y'all. It's sometimes it likes to go black. Okay. Perfect. They're also telling you about a bunker house, about the visitor center in general, it's 30,000 square feet, the hours of operation for cleaning, they're letting you know about peak season. They're giving you all these details. I'm not going to go through all the details because this is where their expertise comes in or maybe your expertise comes in. You could be somebody who specializes in, in janitorial work and you live in Nebraska. You can still bid on the work in Alaska. You may need to call around and find out what the market rate is, but you're going to have a way better idea of what the fee is because of your expertise. So just keep that in mind. It also lists that the government is the overall administrator and the only person authorized to make any changes in pricing. This is important to know because I've come, <laughs> there have been some situations where a government person may say, oh, it'd be really great if you did X, Y, Z. And then you think, oh, I'm going to get paid for that. This is great. This is awesome. Like only the contracting officer is authorized to make any changes. And these changes should be must be in writing. So if all of a sudden, if they're like, you know what? We really need you to come in more often. We really, you know, yeah, we thought at peak season was going to only be from May to Labor Day. Like, what if it's really warm in Alaska? Just because of, you know, say global warming. And they're like, oh my gosh, peak season has now spilled over till November. Then you're going to want to make sure you get this in writing because you're probably going to have to charge them more because you weren't anticipating doing all of the cleaning. Contract personnel. The contractor is the individual or company who is awarded the contract. The contractor or subcontractor must physically live and have a business address and business license in Homer or within a 20 mile radius of Homer. So this right here is what I would call like a deal breaker. Unless you, I would say, unless you find a subcontractor that meets that requirement. Can you find a contractor? Of course, because this is really specific. It's super specific. So this person exists. 
But if you can't find this person, then do not bid on this. But also don't give up because people are going to read that and be like, oh, I haven't even found anybody. And they're not going to bid. Okay. And then it says the contractor may have subcontractors accomplish the custodial work described by the contract. Let, let me say that one more time for all the people who are like, middleman, except contracting, this is illegal. Kizzy doesn't know what she's talking about. Nobody wins contracts fast. Ugh. <laughs> the contractor may have subcontractors accomplish the custodial work described by the contract. The contractor or the subcontractor shall be available for on-site monthly meetings. So, you know, and you have to speak, read, understand English. It's really important. So I'm going to pause right here because I want everyone to really take this in. The requirements to, to respond to this are easy for a five-year contract, super easy. They've already said you need to find a business in with 20 mile radius, Homer, business license, Sam, got all of that, right? Also, yes, thank you, Melody. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the notification. Sarah, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. I really appreciate your kind remarks. You're amazing. Um, yeah, I would love to do a, a bidding webinar and do so much more. There's so much way for so much to do. And I love, um, Krista, wait, wait, higher long. Yes. Yes. How long y'all been on? Um, I think I've been on an, I don't, uh, in almost an hour, almost an hour, but this is always saved in my channel. You can rewatch it. Share it. It's all here. Hi, hi, Arson. Arson. Excited to see you. We just chatted. Timothy. Oh, good. I'm glad you went through a CPAR process. Awesome. Feel free to put in the chat how that was. Okay. And then there was a remark about how many years you have to be in business before you can win. As many as you want. Let's take a look at this contract. Let's take a look. Let's say you have a connection. You do your due diligence. You find somebody who meets this requirement right here. You've had your business for four days. You met a company. You meet them. They're like, listen, we got this. We got this, Mr. DGK88. <laughs> here's my pricing. I totally get this. I know the building. I've been there. I'm your go-to. We're going to win this. Because all you have to do is a standard form, a technical approach, list the past performance of the sub, and give your pricing. That's it. I, I, I mean... Let's take Unison. I'm not even on there right now. Let's say you win, you bid on, I'm trying to see some technology over here. Uh, like a, they say they need some mice. And you bid, you win a contract for 100 of them. They don't care how long you've been in business. All they care about is they're not bootleg. You give them what they ask for. They're brand new. And you give them to them. And you're able to buy them first and deliver them. Because these are what's considered low risk excuse me, these are low risk opportunities, low risk. If we're talking about cybersecurity, that's completely different. We're talking about missiles. We're talking about other things that's high risk. Then how long you've been in business may be of importance. I say may because if you're partnering with a tech company, it doesn't matter. You're under the umbrella of the tech company. When, um, let's see, I don't remember the exact year we had won this work. It was, I'd had my 8A and I'll go back to this in a second. 
I had my 8A and there was this opportunity at Miami Garrison for this management analyst, one full-time equivalent. I had never staffed that kind of position. I I had completed diversity and inclusion work for the Army, but really nothing like that. However, we had past performance with the USDA. I knew what it took to make sure there was somebody there to do the job and just happened to be that Miami Garrison, I mean, on a bad traffic day, it might be an hour and a half. On a good traffic day, it might be 30 to 40 minutes for me to get there from where I live. I still submitted and we won. So um, I think I'd only been in business a short amount of time. I mean, the first subcontract I got, I didn't even have a business. <laughs> my first address was my apartment. So that's, that's what I did. Oh, okay. Tanya, you're so sweet. What's the best method of partnering with someone who wants to fund or provide their credit to a purchase contract? Um, it would be cool if you find somebody out there who has the cash and they want to make um, money off of you and your contracts. I think that's cool. You can try factoring companies. I have a, a, a video with Mark, um, Mark Stavish. You can try his company. Um, you can try a line of credit. You can try a bank. You can try a credit card. You can try friends and family. Just please, please be aware regardless of what people say to you, to get credit is based on your personal credit. It plays a role. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, Mr. DK, I mean, Mr. DGK88, you just have to find the company in who I mean, in Hawaii and Alaska that meets that requirement. There's no reason you couldn't win. It's just going to take dialing for dollars. You're going to have to get online. You have to keep, be aware of the time difference. You're going to have to be aware. Some people may be a little upset, a little salty. Why are you calling from the mainland? <laughs> you know, you, you're going to have to put on that charm. Just be aware of it. Okay. This is amazing. So what should we include on our website as the middleman? I would not put anything of that nature on my website. Because the only people who, who use those terms are people on social media. The federal government does not use those terms. They call it subcontracting. So I, uh, you, what you do is you list what you provide. Because if you push yourself as kind of like a broker, so let me hear me out. There are companies where that's all they do. They're like, hey, we're going to get you a contract. And you may have, you know, and if you have been, type yes in the comments or type yes if you're watching the replay. <coughs> you may have been contacted by one, contacted by a company who said, you know, we will be able to find you a contract. We guarantee a contract. And when we find it for you, all we ask for is a percentage, right? So there are these firms where that's what they do. They broker all different sizes. That's what they do. That's fine because they're, they may have government contracts, who knows, but they're not advertising to the government that they're a broker. They're advertising to us that they're a broker. So if you, as a government contractor with a cage code, you're explicitly saying like, I do the middleman. This is what I do. The government's going to be like, why are we going with Krista? Why are we paying her? It just comes off icky because it's not the term that they use. It's the term out here. Does that make sense? If that makes sense, type yes. Y'all, I may have to ooh, make it cooler in here. I, man, I ate these, um, <laughs> I splurged and had these ribs. They're really good. Like the food here in Mexico is like really high quality. But man, those ribs, these ribs are extra today, extra salty. My goodness, I'm, I'm hot. And it's not that, it's not that warm in here. I mean, it could be because I have a sweatshirt on. Who knows? Okay, say, so Dorlin said no. Okay, further explain, Dorlin, why you said no. So Chris, Krista's providing her website. Well, Krista, you provide it and people can provide you feedback if they choose. Keep in mind, the federal government is, they are deciding on whether they want to give you work based on your proposals. 
They're not your website. Just a heads up. You don't need to have the website. Okay. So I had asked Timothy to talk about CPARs because in this opportunity, going back to how to read a solicitation, it mentioned, we will look at your CPARs. So Timothy recently underwent this. Uh, he said, thank God I was given a satisfactory rating. The CPAR process was straightforward. And just as you stated, is performance based on the contract theory. So what's really cool about this as an added bonus and a strategy for everyone watching, when you have a CPAR, often you can use that in lieu of past performance. So you don't have to do a past performance questionnaire. Sometimes they ask that for janitorial or any work. They'll say like, we need you to fill out, uh, have these uh, past performance questionnaires filled out. So for Timothy, for the type of work that he's in, if they asked him for it, he could clarify and say, oh, am I able to provide my CPAR in lieu of it in exchange? And they probably will be like, of course, why? Because this is an evaluation of his work on a government contract. They know that this is legit and it has weight. So these are just things to be aware of. And I believe this is something that you subbed on. So even as a sub, you can still receive a CPAR and correct me if I'm wrong by all means. Okay. I know I didn't share the ribs. I, yeah, I, I was, I thought was like, Oh, I'm going to freeze them. Oh my gosh. This place is polio place. Oh my goodness. Y'all their food, <laughs> their, their chicken is so good. It's so healthy. It's so healthy. Uh, how to get a quote back in a reasonable time. What should I say? Give them a deadline. Hey, I need this deadline. I need it as soon as possible. That's what you got to do. Let's see. You said I'm new to the page. Okay, cool. I'm really glad that you're here. Nikki, I use your middleman video. Help me place my first bid on Unison. Awesome. This, this is so awesome. Oh my God. I'm so excited by this. I'm going to take a photo if you don't mind. I'm so ecstatic. I know. I'm just so ecstatic because this is part of my why. The big part of my why. I was going to read it. Is it behind me? Hold on. I'm going to grab it because it's important. Let me see if I can grab it without falling. Okay. I bring love, light, and inspiration via my content, products, and services to a billion people. I help people manifest and actualize their personal, family, and financial goals. This is a list of my manifesting items, manifestation items. So, sorry, there was a lot of face. <laughs> Just trying to get comfortable. So I really appreciate that. Subcontractor was happy to, happy to provide a proposal since he had already completed one for another prime. No answer yet. Okay, just follow up. But it's cool because... For us, if somebody reached out to my firm and they were like, hey, uh, and this happens, sometimes they'll do this, like, hey, we want to partner on XYZ. As long as they're not shady when we do uh, some research on them, my team will give them the information because it's easy. You're doing all the heavy lifting. All we have to do is come on and sing. Okay. I have someone who wants to invest. How would you draw? Um, Tanya, I would contact a lawyer. That's a good question, though. Okay, so I know Dorlin said no. I don't see his follow-up with the no, but maybe you will follow up with a no. Okay. Do you use AI to make proposals? Sometimes I do. And I want to go back to this because this is how to read a solicitation. And I think I'm going to quickly do a source of thought because... Monday, I don't know if tomorrow, Monday is upper body, lower body. We got lots of weight to lose, a lot of body fat to decrease, and I'm going to be doing like a fitness show. So we got to get it together. So, okay, got it. Sun got it. Kent Casa 25. Can you answer my previous question? Okay. Thank you for being here for the live. I feel like Casa 25, I answered your previous question. I think Casa 25, you're going to have to put, put it again because I I answered your question about do you call before or after? If there's another question, put it in here. But I believe I answered you. Okay, see what else we have. Okay, 
And then Nikki, me and the summer communion twice a week, waiting for the Coast Guard. Ah, I see what you mean. Got it, got it, got it. Perfect. This is amazing. Keep us posted. No, you, don't worry. Nobody's late. We're all on time. Casa, just post your question again. So I believe I answered it, but in case. Thomas, what type of liability do we get? Maybe you just join. So for this opportunity that I just shared, this one right here, and I'm going to share the screen for those of you just joining or you just want a refresher. This is janitorial work in Alaska. Nothing came up for insurance, did it? Oh, oh here we go. Hold on. Well, good. Let's take a look. Let's see what they want. Okay, it looks like they're going to do some kind of background check and they're going to re, re Okay, Fish and Wildlife will pay. It looks like you're going to have to deduct the background check. And then you need insurance equal to or greater than a million per occurrence to commercial umbrella liability insurance. Ah, so that is right here. And then also they have instructions for what the people need to do and things like that, which again, you would share with the, the teaming partner or you're the middleman, you know, the people you're subbing it to. So for this, I mean, you can leverage their insurance because they've left this pretty open. Uh, it wouldn't cost you a lot to have this type of insurance. It's something where in this contract, you might be able to get away with them, them being the company who's executing the work with them having that insurance. But what I want to emphasize is the insurance requirement is a contract by contract basis. So general liability is a very common form of insurance and it's helpful to get, but it doesn't mean that you are going to necessarily need it. And because this contract is very loose with the requirements, the way that it's written, the terminology, you may be able to get away with having the sub. You could even ask, contact Timothy. You have until, what was it, March 10th or something? I don't remember exactly. In the other attachment, it lists the okay good the other attachment lists the deadline for contacting timothy and that's another good question that you can ask timothy you can ask timothy do you uh is the insurance requirement the responsibility of the prime it's the 13th or yeah questions about the 13th is that responsibility of the prime or of the sub or is there an insurance requirement of the prime or is it okay if the sub has it? But here's what you got to keep in mind. You may not get the answer that you want. So sometimes not asking a question is a power play. It's like playing chess or cards where by not asking the question, you're in a world of gray. Because to my, they didn't ask you for it. They're not asking you for your insurance with your proposal. So that means after the award, it gives you time to get that together. Okay, so does that make sense? If that's clear, type yes. Oh, okay, so CASA. CASA, do you have the kind, you, out, you, you just mentioned this is my teaming partner. So usually in the proposal, you would have, and thank you for reposting this, you would have like about us. We've been in business, blah, 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 blah. And then the next paragraph, it's about them. And then normally I'll have like a sentence or two that says we're coming together to, we are coming together as the KPC team to bid on this opportunity, something like that. It can be very brief. My first time viewing GovCon niche. Robert, I'm glad you're here and welcome. GovCon expert, expert with the popping hair. 
Pop and Curls, after a contract has been awarded as a subcontractor, what is the best way to reach out to the prime? Shania, Shania Pickleberry, hopefully I pronounced your name right. So there's a lot of follow-up questions. Were you included in the proposal? Is this something that, like, were you part of the team? Or did they just call you for a quote? Did they have you sign a teaming agreement? So I, I just would need clarifying questions. Okay, good. No, thank you for posting that here. Okay. When insurance is required, is it feasible to request the sub to add? Tanya, I would, that's something you got to run by, I would run by contracting officer and by the sub because I'm not sure if that costs any money. We do not have any other companies on any of our insurance. So not saying it's not possible. Nice strategy, Kizzy and the subcontractor teaming partner. Thank you, Keen. I appreciate it. Okay, you found them. Were you included in the proposal? Do you have a copy of the proposal? Okay, so just clarify that. Before the solicitation, who do I contact about forecasting? Okay, I'll, I'll quickly show you forecasting and then we are going to look at a source of thought. So what I just showed you is a RFP, a request for a proposal. That's what we walk, walk through. Meaning the agency, Department of Interior, has money to pay for the thing. That's what we just walked through. So we understood what's the evaluation criteria, lowest price, what you need to bid, what the work is, what the requirements are, a firm has to have the business license, 20 miles or whatever from Homer. All of that spilled out. You know, to email Timothy by the 13th of March, everything is spilled out. This is a very simple, easy, low risk opportunity to bid on. Question was asked about finding um, forecasts. So a forecast is like, I equate it to a wedding registry. You know you'll need all those things. Don't, don't lie. Don't lie. You don't need that golden toaster and the sheets and the couch and the money for your honeymoon. You just are going crazy hoping people are full of joy that you got married and they're going to buy all these things for you. So the same thing goes for the government. It's like a registry. So you go here to forecast and they're all here. Most of them, anyways. They do not always update these, uh, but they're here. Acquisition.gov. Acquisition.gov. And you click the link. Acquisition.gov. And then I'll show you where we end up. From acquisition.gov. You can see here for USAID. They're having a forecast partner webinar, March 26th. You may want to attend. All of that's here. Um, if you have specific questions, they outlined who to email. And you can search the forecast by clicking that button. Once again, this is like a wedding registry. Just because it's there does not mean they're going to buy these things. That's why you they mentioned that you can email them with any kind of questions that you may have. That's how you pretty much find the forecast. If there's a forecast that you're looking for that's not there, try Googling it. Again, keep in mind, they don't always update these forecasts. Next, I'm going to show you a source of sought notice. A source of sought notice is basically like when you're looking for something, let's say you're trying to find a television and you're like, oh, I want a television. I need it to be a 60 inch TV. I don't, I don't really know what I want to pay for it. Let's go on Amazon. Okay. Oh, but wait a minute. Hold on. We got that Costco membership, don't we? Yeah. 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 But you know, aren't we going by target soon? Yeah. And so now you're, you're, 
trying to figure out where to buy it, who has the one. Maybe you, you're like me. I love going into the stores to see how it looks. That's what they're getting at. With a source of sought notice, an agency is trying to figure out who can do it. Are there small businesses who can do it? Um, <clears throat> maybe they need clarification. Maybe you're like, oh, I just need a 60 inch. Maybe you didn't know that now they have some new technology that you never thought about, but then you found out and it's like, oh my God, we need that. We need 55 HDK, you know, and you didn't even know. That's a source of saw. So the beauty of a source of saw is if enough small businesses respond, usually if it's two or more of the same type, they are supposed to set aside as a small business. And this is crucial because this is what the government will say. Well, we put out their source of thought notice, but no small businesses bid. They just never respond. They never respond. So, so don't give them an excuse to not set aside. But you just have to keep in mind, it's not going to lead to a contract. If you're looking for, hey, I want a contract win, you're going to have to balance. Put the majority of your work in understanding solicitations and then sprinkle with source of salt. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to jump right into this. This will be our conclusion. If you have questions, ask now because we're getting to the end. So I'd like to go into Sam. I go into contracting opportunities, advanced search, notice type, sources sought. I like to do dates, three months. And because we're here live, I'm just going to pull whatever comes up. So you can see there's 1,091 do within three months. So we're going to look at the education paramedic education program. So very similar to what we went over. You can see this is under Department of Defense, Navy, NAV sub, NAV sub, global logistics support, Yokosuka. So it looks like we're talking Japan or Guam. Because you just failed. Well, well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. It could still be Japan. Okay, I'm feeling Japan. So we have all this beautiful information. Typically, you're not going to see a set aside with the source of salt because of what I just shared. They're trying to figure out their acquisition strategy. Also, you can see the set aside. It says pay, place of performance GU, but we'll see because who knows? Look. Determine sources sought is notice is to determine the availability, right, of these types of businesses. So if you're the go-to in this field, then please respond. And then what you'll see here is they're explaining to you what they're looking for, paramedic education program what they're looking for you to provide. Capabilities statement should be brief and focused on the statement of work. This does not mean you send them the one pager you created. No, 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 no. Actually, you don't even really need a one pager unless you plan on doing outreach and a lot of dialing for dollars. They want specific. It would be as if you're like, oh, I want a 60 inch TV. And they start showing you these little TVs or computer monitors and you're scrunching your face. Like, I didn't say I wanted a 40 inch TV or a dual monitor. I'm, I want a 60 inch television. Where are they? And I don't want a purple one. That's what they're saying to you. Okay. So they also want you to include sales brochures, company. They're giving you all the instructions right here. They teed it up perfectly. And they're calling it a capability statement but as you see, concise and focus on the requirements. So this is not your one pager. Also, be aware of the time difference. You can Google, what is the time? What is JST? So that you hit the deadline. And then you at, open the attachments here. So you can see my cursor, it doesn't work because they deleted it.
One thing the Department of Defense loves to do is put the word draft on some documents. So you're going to see that here. You all see that? They have the word draft on the document because it's that. It's a draft. If you wanted to, although they don't ask for it, if there's something that you're like, man, they really need to add, they really need to consider, put that in there because then that makes you rise to the top. It's like, oh, wow, they're really a thought leader in this. We, Oh, man, we would have never thought about that. So things to think about when responding to a source's thought, you're trying to shape it so that they set it aside for this set of sides you have, or if you have an 8A hub zone, SDV, OSB, that they sole source it to you. So this is fairly short. It's only two pages. And then they redacted the point of contact. So it's period of performance, six months, six month accelerated paramedic training. Place of performance, it says contractor or coordinated facilities. And if you need to clarify that, contact the point of contact and ask, hey, I just need to clarify, which is important because I don't know Japan, where this is, you want to clarify. But keep the time difference. Don't call them at three in the morning. <laughs> just please don't. We have a client in Hawaii. And so, you know, around this time, I may get emails from them. Or I definitely at eight in the evening, I get emails. And that's fine because they're the client. I'm not going to contact them at two in the morning. That just sounds ridiculous and it makes me look incompetent. Oops, I apologize, y'all. The screen wasn't there. Let me show you one more time so you can see what I'm talking about. And I appreciate you being flexible with me and the black screen. So they list everything here. They redacted. You have the place of performance. You want to clarify. You see it's six months. So everything is there. That's it. And then all of the instructions, once again, are listed here in SAM, in the actual listing. And this is just simply regarding the size standard. That's it. It doesn't mean that this work is $20 million. It's for six months, y'all. So just keep that in mind. That's it. And so that's all you got to do. You're not going to see instructions to offers, evaluation, because they're doing like market research. They're trying to figure things out. And as with a RFP, every single one of these, a source has sought, all of their requirements vary. So just something to keep in mind. I'm going to answer some questions. And I, again, I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. You are amazing. Okay, so Timothy, in case, in my case, looking to partner, they required me to have insurance as a sub. Timothy, I was like that too. There was a huge um, Fortune 500 company, and they're like, you have to have liability for a million dollars. So he already had it in place. He recommends you have it in place by all means. You know, it's easier when you have it, but you also have to do what works for your budget. Thank you, Royal. I think I'm funny. Now everybody does with the pop and curls, but I think I'm funny. Okay, sent me an email with cash in it. Is that what you sent me? An email with cash. Is Guam? Yeah, I know. Okay, thank you, Tanya. I would still verify because it says Guam, but then it's Japan, and I understand they're in the Pacific, but I would just verify because you're not going to be, like, somebody's got to do these things. Like, is are the people already there? Is that paramedic company already there? I don't know. Should you pay attention to business size standards? No, unless you are getting close to hitting the size standard, meaning that you have that NAICS code as your primary NAICS code and your average three to five business receipts are over 21 million. Can you speak about getting your first contract in partnership? Eva Lee, the bottom line is you bid. You find something that you feel comfortable with. You find a partner or a subcontractor. You middleman it. You partner with somebody and you respond. I mean, it's, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be like, you gonna be like, yeah, yeah, but I mean it. Like, this is, this is how it works. You have to bid. It's like if you were selling, like I, I'm into crystals and stuff, and these are two of my favorite bracelets right now. Somebody sold these to me. They had to put them out there. They had to get them. They had to pay for them. They had to put them in the storefront, and they had to make me aware that these were there to buy. If I didn't know that these bracelets were there, then I couldn't buy these bracelets. The same goes for you. And the way that the federal government knows that you're there is you bid on things. 
that's how they know whether it's USPS, whether it's GPO.gov, whether it's Unison, whether it's Divs, whether it's SAM, whether it's Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, Iowa, California, Hawaii, Montana, New Jersey, Rhode Island. If they don't know you exist, you're not submitting a bid, they can't award you anything. That's it. Okay, cool, Jamal. Love that you need one-on-one -on -one lessons. You can um, join my Facebook group. We'll have the make sure I put the link in there. You can send an email to uh, melody at kizzyparks.com, melody at kizzyparks.com. Don't forget to hit the like notification button, um, subscribe, share. Okay. Thank you. I love it. I do rock your amazing ship. Oh, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for that. I appreciate you. Okay. Hendrix Wilson, Hendrix Wilson, for what video do you recommend to start my journey? I, man, the 2023 Sam, the cage code video. I had to redo the 2024 one, but I would start there because you need a cage code. And although there's slight differences because with any platform, there's always updates, it'll still get you there. Okay, so Shania, thank you for going back to this. No, I was not included in the proposal, had no communication with them prior to them being awarded. So then my question is, what is the value of you contacting them? People have done that. So I was going through my email and I was like, oh, we, we saw that you won this award. It's like you get married and it's like, oh, man, you know, Kizzy, why did you get married? You know, I, I just, you know, I know you're married, but, you know, I've always been in love with you. What, what am I supposed to do with that? There's no throuple. So if they're asking for additional help. Yes. But chances are they already have people in place. But at the same time, if you don't shoot your shot, you never know. Again, no thruples over here. I'm just saying. Okay. Let me keep it going. Let's see what else. CJ, this is amazing. My first time on here. When is the next class like this? I love this. I must say I'm so like blown away how many of you like you're new. <clears throat> I really appreciate it. I like doing these on Sunday, Sunday evening. Um, it should work. There, if there's a Sunday I'm not on, it's because, you know, your girl's resting or doing something, you know. I got to get back to Mexico City. I love Mexico City, y'all. Like I may go there this weekend. So, but if any of you ever come to Mexico anytime soon, let me know. Let me know. But that's a great question, CJ. I really appreciate you being here. And I appreciate y'all spending the time. This is not a short class. This is not stuff they teach you in school. There's millions in my Facebook group. There are people, there are business owners in there who do over 10 million a year. They may not post, they may not be active, but they're in the group. There's contracting officers. There's all kinds of people in there. What should I do if I bid and don't have a client in place? Where do I look? Oh, Pita. Just look, look online. You can look on LinkedIn. You can look on um, Facebook Marketplace. You can look on Angie's List. You can look on Google. You can ask friends and family. You can post requests in the Facebook group. You can post it in a different group. You, I always tell people, by any means, Put it on Indeed, put it on LinkedIn um, Recruiter. It's by any means necessary because you never give a contract back. I'm so excited that you got the book. I'm going to take a photo of this one. You're amazing. Okay, great. I love that. Perfect. And make sure if you order the book from winnerswaybook.com. <laughs> winnerswaybook.com you get free bonuses winnerswaybook.com you get free bonuses keen can i get some help with the actual bidding writing yeah i mean there's programs we're going to offer i do not do proposal writing because the thing is it's not about the proposal for those who maybe join late or you're watching the replay of this go through what we just went through do you need a proposal writer? Would you, I mean, let me know. 
would you need a proposal writer to do that proposal for Alaska? Type yes if you need a proposal writer. I did. Y'all better not type no yes. I mean, you, honestly, you don't. I mean, but if you, you think you do, type yes. I love y'all. But you don't, I mean, honestly, you wouldn't need anybody to write that proposal. So if you hired a proposal writer, Keen, they're going to gladly take your money. But it's something that you could have done yourself. It might take you a little longer because it's your first time, but they didn't ask for a lot. You see what I mean? So I just like to put that out there. Yeah, I agree with you. No, you wouldn't need anybody. I put that out there because getting that help and, and potentially even hiring a proposal writer, for those of you thinking of that, it's especially helpful when you have this down, when you're like, this is my process. Here's my about, here's this, here's that, here's my past performance, do, 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 do. boom. Because that happened with one of my students because I'm not bidding on uh, religion, religious opportunities anymore. Uh, Keen, send an email, melody at kizzyparks.com. So she was on here earlier and she's so sweet because she's not, you know, this isn't her working hours. She got a family. She got, she got man. She got life. She got life. So send a message to Melody at Kizzy Parks, any of y'all. So, um, yeah, when you have that process down, then you have all that. So I gave the input to one of my students and she, Daisy, and she ended up winning three religious um, contracts when we, I was coaching her. So um, let me give you the link for the Facebook group and I'll put the link on here again because it's way easier when you have the, the link. And also be on the lookout. I'm going to offer a subscription on school, S-K-O-O-L. So if you're down for that, please make sure you make me aware of that. If you're not down for that, make me aware of that too. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jacques, about it. Yeah, it's, I gave it some convoluted name. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Yeah, I agree with you, Tim, Timothy. Chat GPT is a game changer. I'll use it. I'll, you can even do, give me an about us for janitorial company. Boom. And then they give it to you. Does put, um, not exactly. It's more political than anything. I, I don't really worry about it. Oh, good. I'm going to another photo. I'm going to get Timothy's photo in here. Another book arrived. This is amazing. You all, I love posting these on Instagram. So I love it. Winnerswaybook.com winnersweighbook.com. Also, I have a request because y'all, I don't, I mean, honestly, I really don't ask much of everyone. And I would love reviews on Amazon because I push for the books to be purchased off of winnersweighbook.com. If you write a review on Amazon, I'm going to up my initial offer. I will hold like a private Q and A. So if you write a review, you take a photo of your review and you email it to melody at kizzyparks.com. I will have a private like group Q and A. If you can't make the Q and A, we'll get the questions for you and I'll record them and then release them to you guys. I just want more reviews because I constantly get feedback on the book and I'm like, we have six reviews, but we've sold thousands of books. So <laughs> I'm just like, you know, but I also understand because Pretty much 99% of the orders have come from winnersweighbook.com. So it's my only ask. It's my only, only ask of y'all. Besides liking, hitting the notification button, and subscribe. I mean, come on. You know, if you could do that for me, that would be cool. If not, you know, I understand too. But the deal is post a review on Amazon, take a photo of it, email it to melody at kizzyparks.com. So make sure you do that because then when I do the Q&A, we'll have your email address and I'll in, invite you. The, the GovCom Winners Way... Um, if you type in Kizzy Parks, it'll come up. How to win government contracts faster than trying to do it alone. Winnerswaybook.com. Just give me a, a second to give you all the link. Winnerswaybook.com. Tijuana, Tijuana Scott. Y'all, I got to go to Tijuana because it's the home of the Caesar salad. Tijuana, Mexico. I was just over it. Moved on. That's it. Stefan, hello, how are you? 
Thank you, Robert. Craig, good, Craig. I'm interviewing you soon. I'm so excited for you. So I'm interviewing Craig. So he's won contracts. Kizzy, I recently used ChatGPT for the first time for two proposals and it turned out good. This is awesome. You know, and I am no me by no means the chat uh, prompt master. So those of you who are, or, you know, it's going to be even better for you. Carl, what's up? See, Lanier, that's what I'm talking about. And yeah, please read the, re leave the review. I love it. I mean, I know, you know, it's, listen, here, let me not do it like that. I'm all about the value. That's why I'm taking my time with some different offerings because it's about what can get you there the fastest within four months. What's the best for everybody here? Not like, I mean, it's sell you some stuff. Like, that's not my why. My why, for anyone who joined late, this is my list of the things that I manifest. I bring love, light, and inspiration via my content, products, and services to a billion people. I always like the McDonald's when billion people served. I don't eat McDonald's anymore, but it does make me happy. And I always wanted a party at McDonald's and never had one. I know. It's okay. I think I went to one though. Yeah, I went to birthday parties there, but I never had my own. I help people manifest and actualize their personal family and financial goals. Those are two of my big ones. And then I'll throw this in here because manifesting is really important, especially for those who may be like, I don't know if I can do this. I, I, I need to have these things in place. And there's like that doubt. Things are going my way because I said so. The universe is working for me, not against me. That that one is really important. What we what we say, we believe, and it happens. Oh, Melody, you are such a trooper. Like this, look at you. You are a trooper. I really appreciate you being on here. She's a trooper. Okay, got that title. Got that. Okay, I'm, wow. I'm going to do a couple more things and then it's time for bed because we got a hard workout this week. Got the book the other day. G Fibs helped us too. Back end of getting paid by contractors as vendors. Okay, cool. Um, I'll tell you quickly about that. Okay, so thank you for indulging me. Uh, typically, um, the G Fibs. Don't have any remarks on that. Not sure how to clarify that one. Back end uh, by contractors as vendors. Back end getting paid by contractors as vendors. If you are looking, if you're wondering how do you get paid as like a sub, that's based on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely put Melody's email here again. It's up to them. The federal government typically pays you ACH. It's directly deposited into the bank account that you listed in SAM. I believe with USPS and you work with them, it's still ACH. It may be a little different. Maybe they ask you for a form, but it's typically ACH unless they use a credit card. Melody at kizzyparks.com. That's a good question. I received a notice of intent Friday and it was my first one. A question that I sent out Friday, should I respond? received in like a notice of intent. Tell me, let me know what you mean by NOI. Uh, Keen, I wouldn't, okay, listen, I'm just keeping it real. I would go to winnerswaybook.com because you get the free bonuses. Just leave the review on Amazon. That's all I ask. OT worldwide. I love that. I love your teachings because it clues how to have a positive mindset. It is, it is too, it's totally super important because if you have a crappy mindset, then I'm like, why even do this? Didn't just be miserable. Nobody. Okay. Uh, let me do this. Payment GFIBS. Payment transaction screen in GFIBS. <coughs> yeah, you're going to, I would contact them. IPP is a payment system that uh, department, uh, I mean, that fed federal agencies use. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Oh, you are. Oh, I misunderstood you. <laughs> He's like, I am GFIB's tier two help desk. Oh, okay. I got it. I got it. I, I, it's registering with me, Stephen. Took me a minute. Okay. Do you have a coaching program? Yes. Contact Melody. We're revamping things. Oh, Sharifa. I love this. Give that for your inner child. Oh, I love that. I was doing my inner child work with a hood healer. Her first name is Imani. Yeah, but I don't eat McDonald's. So... 
No. It's one thing to eat ribs because they're, I would say they're the healthiest ribs I've ever had, if that makes sense. You know, so that's McDonald's. My body would be like, what? I got goals, y'all. I'm going to do this um, transformation category at a fitness event in November. You guys should come. Simply the common. What's the name of business giving a review for? Are you talking about CPAR's chip? You're putting on some great content. You are amazing, Frank, and everybody for being here. So I appreciate you. Okay, let me get a couple more and I'm out live from Tulum, Mexico. I'll be here. <laughs> I'll be here indefinitely, except for my time, times when I pop into the States and when I um, travel throughout this great country. Can you talk about products, suppliers, and how to get them to work with to work with toy toys with you, with you as a small business? Sun is going to take some negotiation. And it's going to take a lot of that because just, just business, you want some pens. I already have companies who are constantly ordering these pens. You come out of nowhere and now you want these pens. Who am I going to give preference to? So you're going to have to really convince them. Listen, I'm, I know I'm not the big fish out here. I'm just here to get a deal. I'm interested in government contracting. You're going to have to put it in a way where it's a win-win for them, but you also are like kind of bowing at their feet, if you know what I mean. You got to keep that in mind. And also sometimes they have exclusive relationships. They may only have certain vendors. Why? I mean, certain resellers, because then it's more guaranteed work for them. If they know John's pens, that he sells a million pens a month, why not have John's pens as your salesperson? So it just, it just takes that. One tip is there's a video I did with Jerry. You can look it up on my channel. And what he did was he went through like the GSA schedule. He looked at previous contract awards of companies who offer certain products and who like maybe won one or two awards and he formed relationships with them and became like their authorized, their only authorized government reseller. It's a play, but just keep in mind because sometimes a vendor may say, no, we're not going to sell you those Hellcats. We're not going to sell you those snowmobiles and the government buys snowmobiles. I don't know about Hellcats. They might, but they definitely buy snowmobiles. And they may say, well, we're not going to resell them to you. So, you know, it's just part of the product game. Let's see if there's anything else, but I love the question, son. Keep the questions coming up. Okay. Let me see. Oh, hold on. I saw one thought. Ah, notice of intent. I have never received one, but read over what they asked for and had some questions. Um, feel free. Uh, I would love to am. I'm really curious. If you're, if you're in my Facebook group, DM me or join the Facebook group and DM me. Okay, Nikki, DM me. Because I'm not sure if the notice of intent, state, local, federal. What's the easiest names to get contracts on? I mean, any that most people are overlooking. I wouldn't say there's one NAICS. Oh, what's the, the time frame for the review? Um, oh, that's a good question. I would say at least a week. I think at least a week, Thomas. And we have it here on video. So one week, at least a week. Okay, great. Thank you, Lisa. Great session. Love your energy outlook. Outlook energy. Love Mexico too. Yeah, I love it. It's fun. It's, it's amazing. Okay, I love that. I love you got the little stars. I love it. Okay, the name of the business on Amazon. Oh, oh, you're giving. Oh, th thank you, Chip. My book for me, for Kizzy Parks, GovCon Winners Way, the book. Thank you for asking. I really appreciate it, y'all. I would really love that. I help write the receipt bot. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Yeah, I don't know anything about any of that. No Hellcats. Yeah, I don't think they buy Hellcats, but they do buy other things. Good. I'm glad you got your book too. I'm loving this. Loving this. Thank you for pouring your amazing energy into us. Looking forward. Same here. Okay, let's do a couple. No contracts in PD2 for Hellcats. What about BPAs? 
<coughs> RICA, because again, this is how to read solicitation. So we covered a lot of that and I'm going into Q and A. Okay. So feel free to go back, stop, review. This is something that you're just going to keep doing. You're going to keep doing. What about BPAs? Any resources on that? Blanket purchase agreements. The first one that I went over wasn't the cleaning one a blanket purchase agreement? I think it was. So there's really nothing different to keep in mind, except you may want to ask the point of contact, is this going to be a single or a multiple award? They may, even if they say single, they may change their mind. You know, so just keep that in mind. That's really the only difference in, um, eh, maybe on the rare chance they might ask you to respond to a sample task order, but I mean, there's really not huge differences with it. But it's a good question. Why don't you know if you have a sub that isn't doing the job as contracted, what do you do? Well, I always want to fire everybody. So I'm always like, they're fired. And then a team member is like, no, 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 come on. Let's, let's work it out. Let's look at this. I mean, we had this goodness. We had somebody mislead us as far as their background with training and the client will never work with us again. And that's my fault. It's all on me. So we made it work and actually we did use the contractor again because their specific skill set works elsewhere. There are people where they've, they've trained for us and maybe they said something. Oh, actually, here's another example. We had this guy train and he was like, oh, I'm so good. And he was terrible. We had to actually redo the course and we'll never work with that person again. So you just make the most out of it. That, that's all we do is you just make the most out of it. A woman who I mentored, <coughs> she was, um, I had one of my team members with her and she was installing an HVAC and the initial company didn't show up. So on the spot, on the job, she's like trying to find companies to help her with HVAC. You got to make it work. That's part of having a business. Do you have a video on reps and certs? I'm stuck. Um, it just depends. Like re your reps and certs are in your SAM profile. It's about what is the agency asking you for? And if they're asking you about reps and certs, usually those reps and certs are in the documents. So so I get the being stumped. So if they're like 52-103-42, you just do like a my computer, a command F and find that. And then you would answer it and you can cut and paste it. You can just take it from the PDF. And if you need to clarify, what are they wanting you to respond to? Because sometimes it's good enough for you just to go into your workspace, download the reps and certs and give them that. Sometimes they want something specific, like maybe on... Um, if it's products, they may want you to answer some questions about the origin. They may ask you questions. You never know. Maybe they ask you questions about the company who owns TikTok. They may ask you questions about communication devices. Oh, I think there was one we had to fill out where they were asking if we were felons or if I was a felon or something like that or, or if I owe taxes. So it's always based on what does that opportunity need? Because the opportunity that I reviewed way earlier in this video Y'all notice they didn't ask anything about reps inserts. They just say that you need to be in SAM. They're more concerned that you're in Homer, Alaska and got a business license. So everyone is different, but I got it. I totally get that it's frustrating. Yeah, I do like to give you abundance mindset. It's so true, Van. I think this is, this is it's a couple other ones. My words are charged with prospering and manifesting power. Things are going my way because I said so. The universe is working for me, not against me. With praise and thanksgiving, I set the riches of God before me this day to guide, govern, protect, and prosper me. I mean, these are the things I say. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's important to me. I just attached the whole shit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to go do monetized. Uh, <laughs> we have to bleep that out. Carl, I love you. I kind of do that too. Sometimes I'm just like, send them the reps and certs, send them this, send them that. Because I with the reps and certs, I rather give them too much because I, I hate, I've had them come back like, you didn't fill this out. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be mad at me. Okay. I think I got everything. You all are amazing. I got to get more water since I had those ribs. <laughs> Man, that place is so good. Yeah, it is. I love it. Life. Yeah, it is in the power of the tongue. Okay, great. Keen, oh, I'll review it maybe every day. Kind of depends on the day. Days are always different. 
Sometimes it might be at night. It just depends on like where I am, what I'm going through. I actually attended a manifesting event virtually today. So I have a lot more and I want to like revamp this. Um, and since I'm here, I have to, there's a certain place I can go to. So I want to revamp my list and print it because I like having the printed things. To me, it's really important to have like written things. I have sticky notes. I have a lot of stuff like that. And it does. It definitely feels good to be positive. Okay. And then Stefan, you'll close this out. When vendors don't register in time, I'm the person that can block and unblock vendors for posting and purchasing. Oh, wow. That's really good to know. Y'all, we all need to know Stefan. So make sure Stephen, I'm, I'm sorry, I keep calling you Stefan. It's because it's time for bed, Stephen. So please join my Facebook group. If you need any documents for teaming with people, gcwdocs.co, download them. Okay, good. Thank you, Nikki. If I don't look at it today, it probably will be tomorrow because if not, I'll scroll and three in the morning and I got my workouts are so hard. My trainer is a professional bodybuilder. Like she used to be overweight. She lost a bunch of weight. She's like, her body is sickening. It's, it's so amazing what she's done. Check out my book, winnerswaybook.com. Don't forget, please leave a review on Amazon of my book, but buy it from winnerswaybook.com because you get free bonuses. Leave a review on Amazon. Take a picture of the review, send it to melody at kizzyparks.com, and we're, I'm going to have do a Q&A with y'all. So if for some reason you're like, I can't make the Q&A, that's cool. Send your question ahead of time, and I'll record it, okay? And thank you. I appreciate you. I'm like, I was thinking Graham Stephan, and I just have everything in my head. Do you have courses to get started for us as rookies? I do. So let me put this together. Let me give this to you because I know Melody so kindly gave me a list and I'm, <laughs> I'm pulling up that list and laughing at the same time because um, it's a beautiful list that she put together because she knows how I am with links. So um, we have a starter kit and we have other things that are coming out. So just give me a second. Thank you all for being really patient with me. I really appreciate it. I wasn't going to share these items and I need to share these items. There are a couple things that we have. Oh, there they are. And, um, I'll share them because I want you to keep in mind we have what I'm sharing right now. And then there's a, no, 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 that's okay. Can you use a sub for insurance? Jerry, sometimes you can just double check. Um, we have way more cooler, better things coming. I'm not saying these aren't not great, amazing things. I'm just saying like, just keep that in mind. Like, please, please keep that in mind. You can take a look at everything. And for those of you watching the replay, I'll make sure that all the links are there um, because I don't believe the chat carries over to YouTube. Oh, wow. Wow, Bert, that's cool, thank you. After watching your videos for like five years, Carter's in, but already learning to get started. That's cool, I love that. I'm gonna take a photo of this one too. I love that, I love just being to inspire my eyes were down. That's all right. I love to be able to help. That's what's, that's what it's about. Let me see if there's, um, there is a more advanced class, but if you're interested in that, it's best to email Melody. So I think this is it. Road trip Trish. I love that name. And I love that you're here. Appreciate you being here. So like subscribe, hit the notification button. Just be ready, y'all. We got a lot coming out. Oh, good, Keen. I'm glad that you bought it. And I have so much more on Middleman. I'm actually doing my own Middleman challenge. I'm going to have tons of stuff on school. I think you guys like school. Nobody really said anything negative about it. S-K-O-O-L. That's where I plan on holding everything. I'll still have the Facebook group, but for the class, that's what I'm thinking. Um, 
Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Robert. Appreciate you all. Appreciate you, Margaret. I mean, just don't forget everything is possible. Been a contractor for 20 years, wanting to be the owner, no longer an employee. That's good. And, and to Bert's point, that's why companies are in government contracting. Bert's been a contractor for 20 years. I mean, it's that's a lot of presidents <laughs> over 20 years. You know, nobody's like, oh, it's government contracting, you oh, know, it's perishing. I mean, that's the beauty of it. So I love that. I love that. Um, Sheree, hello, hello. It's good to see you. Keen, I haven't created it yet. Something we're creating. I'm just putting that out there just to, for feelers. It's what I plan on doing. I'm thinking of charging 90, just being honest, probably 97 a month doing a deal. You pay for the year, 997. You pay for the month, 97. Something like that, you know? And again, it's about what's best for you. And I have people I'm partnering with on content. And I have a really cool offer coming out to help you with products. So there's going to be a lot of things because it's all about what is going to get you there the fastest. Because I'm tired of people saying like, oh, government contracting. <laughs> These people on YouTube are saying you make this money and it's so fast. They're so ridiculous. Please. You know how many people come on my Facebook group and they're like, I watched your video and want a contract? I mean, I'm not BSing you because it happened to me. As a grad student, I have a picture in my book. May not be the best picture because it was probably taken on a Blackberry. It's a picture in my book. Page two. That's me in the blazer. As a grad student, and they're like, we want you to stay on as a contractor. I mean, come on. So what, I made that up? Goodness. Oh, who? <laughs> she's married with children. Yeah, and then Stephen, your friend is scared twenty-two million. Have him con Stephen. Con have him contact me. I would love to interview him. Yeah, did we release a new video? Is the Daisy video out? Oh, maybe you saw the the picture. Okay. I thought the Daisy video was out. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Lisa, there's always haters. There's haters all around in general with government contracting, like just very discouraging. It's going to take a long time. You have to have two years in business. The government's not going to want to do work with you. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, are these classes live? So Jerry, it, it's a mixture. What I plan on doing is, and I appreciate you all being supportive with the school. What it would be is content in the platform and then probably two lives a week. Probably one with me and then one with a team member and then special guest. You know, that's what I plan on doing for a year. Then you get everything. Thank you for doing the units on step to step, trying to do better. I kept getting an error. I called them. Yeah. And it could be something you needed to fill out. Maybe you needed to upload a document. Heck, I'm happy 1.5 million. Yeah, Chip. I mean, there's no reason you can't as long as the opportunity or you have several. It could be you have, you know, five 225 contracts. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't listen to nays naysayers either. You know, that's why I got my sheets. My sheet. I say sheets because I have a copy of this. You know, things are going my way because I said so. The universe is working for me, not against me. You know, that's what it's about. U.S. is a business. It is. All of this is a business. So the government contractor, I mean, the government agency just wants you to get the thing done. That's right. Haters going to hate. I think, didn't Cat Williams talk about that too? Uh, I like S-Corps, but you got to do what works for you. LLC is easy. I just like S-Corps. Except for with my joint ventures or LLCs. Okay, I think this is it. You all are amazing. I can't thank you enough for being here, for investing in yourself, because you're here. So take a look at everything, winnerswaybook.com, winnerswaybook.com. Awesome book. Awesome book. I love and adore each and every one of you. Uh, don't, 
I'm practicing the 40 day prosperity plan. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that so much. Um, the class would more than pay for itself. Like Daisy, for instance, she won three, three religious contracts. I think, I, I don't even know how long I worked with her. She did it within like a couple months. Like she literally was just here in, in Mexico and I filmed with her. I can't wait for you to get your book too, Keen. I can't wait for you. So, I mean, the results do vary. I mean, I like to keep it real. There are some people who don't win contracts, but that has nothing to do with me. You know, it's like a gym. There are a lot of people who have gym memberships and they don't go. Is that the fault of the gym? No, we're all different. But what's important is you have the information from somebody who has active contracts, who's here. Now, somebody who won one contract and now they doing whatever because they won one contract. I'm not here to judge anybody doing whatever. You do what you need to do. I'm just saying like, I'm in it. You're going, y'all are all my best students and you're my hero too. Y'all are my hero. Okay. I got really go. I know. Well, I, don't, I belong to a, well, I belong to plant fitness, but I don't use that here. I go to the place with my trainer with Brittany. I can't wait for y'all to meet Brittany. I may interview her because the fitness piece is really important. So be prepared. I promise y'all I'm going to release a little fitness thing. When I get to the body type I'm, I desire, just be ready. It's going to be a cool little workout. Thank you, Arthur. I understand how the system talks to each other, SQL coding. That's cool. I love that. Uh, applied for cage. Thank you, Dees. Thank you. And I'm going to make a, a more a recent uh, video too. Excuse me. Love it. Much respect and much thanks to you for this class tonight and for you for investing in yourself. And I do this work too. Good. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Yeah. I got ways. I got long ways to, I mean, okay. I have a way, like I'm have a ways to go and there's tweaks I need to make, but no, I'm not playing like to, I had what two months, two massages in the span of like, I probably almost get like three massages, four massages a week because we, she is not playing with me. She is not playing. And that's how I am with government contracts and how I'm with y'all. I'm not playing because there's too much money. There's over $800 billion. I'm not playing. There's too many opportunities for each and every one of you here to win at least one contract. There's no reason you can't. So I appreciate you all. You're amazing. I've said for the million time, you're amazing. I'm going to leave and then I don't, but I for real going to leave. So thank you so much. And thank you, son. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate Jerry. And no limit cash money for the nine nine and the two thousand. Appreciate you. <laughs> yes, and we're out. Everything is possible, y'all. Take care. Winnerswaybook.com. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you all. Thank